But with an aggro deck, it's actually respectable, I think. I think that's where you want it, at least, if it's going to go anywhere, because at least you have that end game reach like we talked about. Uh, cards like Cacklers that come to play and deal damage to you, pretty good. Pretty good. So you see Andrew Tenjim on the right here. He'll be on the play. He opens up with an untapped stomping grounds. And our new Land of War Elf reprint, Elvish Mystic. Okay, we have a mirror land here. Let's see. I'm more excited to see what comes out of this deck. It could be anything. We got a pillar of flame. His removal package is bonfire three times, three times searing spear, three times pillar in James Kincaid's deck. Uh, so he has a plethora of red removal. We have a burning tree emissary and no follow up. I hope James actually has the blind obedience here. It's kind of funny because this is actually the deck he wanted most against. Yeah, a lot of haste elements, Hellrider especially. Right. Now a lot of troll from James, sort of signaling that maybe he's more of an aggro journalist. Lot of troll hasn't seen a ton of play in recent decks, but I think yeah, he has to take this obviously. You know, and, and no one's willing to drop a couple cards just to get a serious spirit anyway. Um, uh, interested to see James Kincaid, see if he has this uh, powerhouse uh, Verils on turn three. Obviously, cannot cast his Boris Reckoner. Uh, that would be the old pipe dream. Lot of troll to that would be very tough to do. AKA impossible. <laughs> All right, so scavenging news. The uh, new hotness, or what you call it, the old hotness that's new? The new hotness. The new hotness from old? There we go, let's give it that. From an EDH standpoint into uh, the real world. So a tapped overgrown tomb, and James happy to just sit back with his Lollatrol on defense. Right. Regeneration on that guy is pretty good. Lollatrol is another card that was kind of swept under the rug. Very powerful card. Two power for two, regenerating, gets bigger. Discard outlet for reanimator if you want to do. Has a lot of uh, different game aspects. And this was one of the, again, one of the superstar cards of the block pro tour in San Diego not too long ago. This was a defining card of many uh, junk style mid range decks. There's a lot of different, a lot of angles, a lot of play in this card, and especially potent in combination with barrels. Right. So we see a, a Gyro Sage here from Andrew trying to set up a big Hell Rider turn. Oh, a Searing Spear is a fantastic draw for James. Uh, gives him an answer to said Hell Rider draw. Also gives him pretty much any remo or removal stuff or anything in his deck. He actually killed the Scavenging Use now before it gets out of control. He's got a, different, a lot of different ways he can use that Searing Spear. And, and this is a, a, a fine way for James to pace the game, not only because his cards are more individually powerful and synergistic than the ones in Andrew's deck, but he also has Bonfire of the Dam in his deck. So the longer that he lets the board sort of develop and build up, the more that Bonfire can be can be devastating. Bonfire, definitely this is the match where you want to do it. This is the match where it shines. Looks like Andrew has a couple land in his hand. Um, and then a red card where the Hell Rider. So that spear, Searing Spear, definitely such a good draw there because otherwise we would see an avalanche of damage coming his way. Oh, he's going to a text. So, James is going to let the attack occur. Interesting. I wonder if he's planning on... He might be using Law Troll to kill Hellrider with just... Maybe the Sooner Spirit is just for scavengers. Yeah, that might be... He's willing to take a lot of damage here if that's the case. I don't. I still think I would do it pre-combat, right? So we're going to see shields up here. And he's passing before damage. So I think this is going to probably prompt a scavenging goose, which I assume will induce the, the spear. spear. I hope he... I mean, I don't see him not using it. It looks like he's taking okay. it. Just taking, taking his lumps what here. What was the searing spear? Is he... Do we worry wrong? Does he not have that in hand? I was almost positive that was the that was the card that I saw. Yeah, but that's it. It's there. He's got some... He's got big plans here. I guess so. It's... We'll see. I mean, again, he can sort of continue to solidify his board. Spirits, right? He no, can continue. There's a bonfire. Bonfire, gotcha. Yeah. He can so continue to so solidify his board with regenerators, but it seems very dangerous to take that fire. amount of damage. Yeah. Because a deck that presumably has a mixture of Searing Spear, maybe Thermal Hellkites, additional Hell Riders. Right. I think it was perhaps a little, a little too conservative for him to be willing to take all of that damage there. Um, and now he passes, so he's obviously going to use it here to not die. I think James you know, just might have made a little error there. Um, now he's in a situation where it's Andrew's in 
a great spot because James would go to three life. And this is actually kind of a an interesting counter synergy here is as we see Searing Spirit now get shot at the at the gyro stage. Is Volatrol against Scavenging Goo is sort of they feed one another here. Right. So he's, he's actually gonna not the Scavenging Goo is still not gonna die because he has uh oh no he is gonna die. Hellrider is in his RFG file I think, isn't it? Is that his well, graveyard? I can't tell. Every creature that that James yeah, kills it. here or discards yeah. to Volatrol is another pump that he has access to with the scavenging. Right. Goose. I couldn't tell if this Hellrider was already eaten. Uh, it looked kind of like in the same pile as his graveyard, but it looks like James's plan was to kill scavenging use with a block there, but it's not going to work. So, now, because James didn't Searing Spear that ooze a long time ago, um, I don't see how he's going to kill that creature. I mean, he's still got a he's still got a stable board, assuming that Andrew misses on a bunch of his draws here, because he can kill that Burning Tramissary the, with his Searing Spear. Right. The Wall of Troll holds off the scavenging Goose, and so they're kind of at parity. Yeah. Good thing about Andrew's deck, he has four Dahmer Raid, and drawing that will fight Lala Troll and pretty much end the game. Oh, I mean, he's got Thunder Maw, Hellkite, Gorklin, Rampager. Yeah, there's so many Vizium cards. Mortars. He has no shortage of. Uh, he drew a red card. I can't see. Is that a Hellrider? It's upside down. Yes, it's not a Hellrider. It might be a Searing Spear. He doesn't have Searing Spear in his deck, so it might be a Vizium Mortars. So you see a Searing Spear here on the Burning Tremis area. He's going to regenerate the Lala Troll. I wonder what he drew. I can't tell. It looked like a red card. Those mortars, he could have. Andrew could have killed him. It was mortars. He could have. He could have killed mortars his Lala Troll and then killed him. Well, the risk there is that if he has two creatures left in hand, then it's, it's pretty rough for him to. I think you go for it, though. I think you. He might even have the six land in his hand right to do it. He could have overloaded. Well, Andrew had. Well, that was the opportunity. That was uh, the game, the ball game, if he went for it. He didn't have the six land, so he could have overloaded. We'll see. Well, he tested the waters last turn. I think that now seeing that the James was sitting on a removal spell like that, he's willing to try again. Yeah, and I, I feel like this board state should have been a little different. I think the Searing Spear should have been used on a lot earlier, like we pointed out. And you can see the look on Andrew's face here. He's like, all right, well, do you, do you Ooh, have it? Okay. This is, Andrew takes the game. It's, it's an interesting series of events there. Yeah, well, I like Andrew not going for it last turn because imagine James has Putrefy in his hand or something. Oh, he, I apologize. He didn't actually need to overload there. I thought he had, he, it would only be a normal cast, so he had mana open to, to deal with it. So if he had Putrefy, then the only worst case scenario would be you're losing, your scavenging is going to lose anyway, and the mortars. I think that if he has Putrefy there, uh, the game is probably going to be out of reach for Andrew himself until he draws one of those other outs. Well, you know I, mean? I like the way that Andrew played those last two turns insofar as he tested the water the first turn to see if he ha if, if James had any sort of like very powerful trick, sensing that that wasn't really the case, that he was probably sitting on cards that couldn't handle scavenging goose. Then he went for the mortars the following turn. Right. I, I like doing that than just firing off the mortars the first time around. Right. In any event, moving on to the sideboard here, uh, Andrew has access to a couple of very powerful cards in his sideboard. He has three Bonfire of the Dams, quite good in any sort of creature matchup. Two copies of Pillar of Flame. James's deck very clearly graveyard oriented. He's so Daryl, so Pillar's a nice card to have there. And four copies of Burning Earth. Another new card from M14. It's primarily been cited against decks like Jund and Blue White Red. Devastating against decks that are primarily or fully non-basic land. Right. And James's deck, of course, showed nothing but non-basics in that game. Do you think you bring it in this matchup? I don't know. Well, I think because uh, as James showed with his deck, he can have that old Burning Tree Emissary, you know, fast, or excuse me, the Ractus Cackler, Dry Militant, all these early drops of all the troll start, and it seems like it might be a dangerous card, but I agree with you. I've seen it against Jun decks where they have Huntmaster's Ractus and still lose because it takes so much damage, so I can see that coming in. Well, I guess. the thing is, from, from sitting in Andrew's seat, he saw nothing in James's deck that indicates any sort of aggressive element. He basically saw. Lala Troll, Barrels, and Removal. Yeah. It does imply maybe there's some other cheap creatures in the deck, right. but James's deck in that game showed off very much more of a mid-range right, value right, deck right, than right, a, yeah. a super beatdown deck. If he knew that there were four Cacklers and four Dry Militants and Falconrath Aristocrats, 
that could be a different question. Maybe you don't want Burning Earth against right. that setup. But James's deck seemed both mid rangey and uh, you know mana intensive enough with cards like Verils and, and everything else. It seems like I, if he has Verils, he, he probably has early drops. Otherwise, it'd be pretty uh, unsynergistic. But yeah, from just what he saw, you're right. It could be uh, some mid range deck with. Uh, just wanting a 3-3 three, three regenerator for 3. I would know. really struggle to keep Burning Earth in my sideboard if I was Andrew, given the cards that I've seen in James' right. deck the first game. Uh, on James' side, he has this whole board can come in. He has Olivia Voldren, fantastic against the aggressive decks. He has Dread Boar, it's a removal spell. It's a little bit slow and clunky, but still kills things. Three more scavenging oozes, or three scavenging oozes total, which makes it, you know, fight fire with fire. They have scavenging oozes, you have it too. It's obviously just a very good card against aggressive decks. He has a Pillar of Flame, a Putrefy, and two Domri. So a lot of these cards, I could argue almost all of them coming in at some point, in yeah. some fashion. Maybe one here, two there. But definitely the Olivia's are going to come in. Definitely the Scavenging users are going to come in. And you're definitely going to see the removal spells coming in. What do you think about Domri against the Blitz deck? I think that if he probably wants to bring in more spells. And I think that Domri's already pretty borderline to begin with, so I would probably not bring in these games. Okay. I'm also surprised that James isn't playing Scavenging Goose main because it's a bit of a nambo with barrels, obviously. Yeah. But Scavenging Goose plus Lala Troll is real. There's a really nice synergy there. We we kind of got to see it in play because Andrew had a Scavenging Goose on his side of the table. But those two cards in concert, pretty nice team. Yeah. I mean, it's probably the less or the least mana intensive card in his deck too. Pretty safe. Yeah. <laughs> Green only required here. So James with the first turn, Rootbound Crag. And James is going to answer that with a pillar. And like you said, yeah, pillar here is pretty good against, in both ways, I think. Good against each other. Uh, Andrew looks like he has a little bit of a slower start. Um, obviously doesn't have the early one drops. Because it was slain a second ago. Stomping ground untapped for Andrew. Let's see what two drops we got here. We got the boar. Not going to be sad to see that guy leave, to be honest. <laughs> Flint Hook 4 with the Land of Pair. Oh man, are we having a turn 3 Reckoner in our 4 color deck? I don't think he has a third land. Doesn't appear so, I think. Or it looks like he has Drive Militant between that and Blind Obedience. Did he, oh, did he mulligan? Because he kept the 2 uh, M13 land. Well, he did have Pillar plus some spells that he could cast, but yes, he did keep 7. Okay. I am definitely not the guy for mulliganing with uh, these aggressive decks, but uh, I definitely get sad seeing just guild gates in my hand. I would, I, a hand with multiple, ca like reasonably castable Boros Reckoners, I would have a difficult time mulliganing against Red Green. Right, especially when you need pretty much any land in your deck. But in his case, he does have Evergreen Tomb, which is not going to get it done. So, is a pillar to answer the scavenging ooze. And it looks like he just drew an isolated chapel, yep, so we he are can't cast man. Reckoner this turn, but next turn he will be able to. Right, right. And a Dryad Militant. It and actually works out pretty well for him. He gets to play uh, two spells in one turn, even though his lands aren't really cooperating. And if I was in Andrew's position, I would really be struggling to... Uh, based on what I saw in the first game, now he's some sort of Naya deck after playing a bunch of over... Right, overgrown tombs, tombs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going to be pretty interesting to see how Andrew reacts to some Reckoners coming in. And that's another scavenger news. That's the fancy foil alternative art one. And he did bring in Domri. So we have, or he left Domri, he brought in his Domri from the sideboard. I don't know if Andrew kept all of his in, but James feels like his creatures are pretty good in the combat arena with uh, Andrew's creatures. Well, certainly paired with Boros right now. Oh, that is just a, like we talked about in pre coverage, you haven't lived until you've done that, I've heard. So go ahead and ask these guys how it feels to do that. So we have a Boros Reckoner now on James' side of the board. Andrew with Thunderbolt, Hellkite in hand, but he can't play an attack this turn because of Blind Obedience. Yep, and um, it's kind of uh, interesting to see the you know dynamic here with all those haste creatures in the aggro deck that you're playing against, and you're playing a card just for a little bit of value, but you're getting double the value here. All right, so we're going to have, I think we have a fight situation here. Uh, that Thunderbolt, Hellkite is pretty bad news when you're at nine life. Then again, you do lose your Reckoner here if you do that. Well, I think, no, that we, we just momentarily had that incorrect. Uh, we were assuming the Thunderbolt was attacking, but uh, it was yeah, yeah, actually okay. in our playing tap yeah, because yeah. of uh, the Blind Obedience. So okay. James still had a reasonably healthy 14. Never mind, then. I don't think it's uh, no time to panic yet. I mean, uh, he can. We can two for one him here with the fight, right? We just uh, two for two us, I guess. Yeah, we can either just get rid of the Thunderbolt Hellkite altogether, 
and redirect to some other creature. Or we can try to play a slower game where we just shoot scavenge and use and redirect to, to Boris, right? Or to uh, to Andrew. Yeah. Or we could fight Boar and redirect to Scavenging Ooze, because we do have a second Boris Reckoner in hand to replace the first one. Yeah, so a lot of options with this Domery, potentially. I think we kill both of his creatures on the ground here. If I can, Let me see the rest of his hand. If we have a reasonable answer to the Thundermall Hellkite eventually. But the thing is, Thundermall will probably kill Domery, which removes the chance of fighting in the future game. So, do you see any answers? for a uh, Thundermaw Hellkite in the future? I think it's very likely that James just has to take yeah, down this Thundermaw. Exactly, because I don't see him... Obviously, you want to just kill both creatures on the ground, because that's his reaction here, but you got to kill that. I thought he drew a Temple Guard. I must have missed some. He, he, he did. He did. said go and didn't play his land. Uh, I think he may have missed the fight trigger with the Reckoner there. Uh, well, no, he fought the, with the Reckoner and then redirected the Oh, the right, right, right. The right. Um, he, did, he did forget to play Temple Garden, though. I think he realized, he said go, and I saw his hand stop. He's like, ah. Uh. <laughs> so. Andrew sending both creatures here at the Domery to be safe to get it off the table. And let's see this, how bad this uh, two damage might affect this game here. When he plays a tap, he's going to play Reckoner here. So this Reckoner, again, a pretty powerful follow-up here from, from James. He's he's able to keep that the board relatively stable here. Reckoner's so good at fighting creatures that are on the ground. Right, and it, until that ooze becomes a 7-7, seven, seven, it looks like Reckoner can still stop it in its tracks. And that shows you how powerful the card is. Where a creature needs to be a 7-7 seven, seven to survive, you know, tangoing with a 3-3 three, three Reckoner here. Yep. Andrew, I believe, is down to a land and a Mizzy of Mortars in hand. How are we going to use the Mortars here? If he Mortars, he can't do it now because he can't afford to lose his Ooze, do you think? Or does he lose his Ooze here and has a Boar against nothing? I think it's really risky to, to lose yourself a Boar ooze. against nothing. Right. I think he definitely, once he gets one more available creature in the bin for Ooze, I think that Mortar is going to be pretty impressive here. I, I would be, I'd be quite surprised to see that. Yeah, that I don't, happen. You definitely I think don't you, do that. I think you can, you can just attack with your Flint Hook War potentially because if he wants to just trade Reckoner for Flint Hook War and deal three to you, you're fine with that exchange. Right? Does he have first strike available or? He has no, no mana untapped. Oh, he's attacking with both though. Okay, and just gonna send both. So this is actually a similar outcome to actually casting the Mizzy War. He's gonna block scavenging units here, three to the scavenging units, and it would be Boar against Dry Milton, it looks like. That's what I think so. Yeah, I think if I was in James' position, I, I think you really need to get an opportunity to get scavenging units off the table while you can. The rest of your deck can brawl pretty efficiently with creatures like Flint Hook Boar, but. He's definitely Scavenging following Ooze our just gets here. worse as the game progresses right. for you. If James would have paid two life, he could have actually had first strike mana open, which is I'm sure he's kicking himself for now. I don't know if that's necessarily the case because if James just says go, or if Andrew rather just says go there, then it's quite bad for you to have paid the two life. Well, he, he would have, you know, he wouldn't have been able to do any attacks at that point. You see a land, wide opening, still still ready there. In play, pinning down Andrew's haste creatures, scavenging ooze, and a extort trigger off the point of obediences. And he's going to take his opportunity now to eat the two creatures out of the graveyard, get his ooze up to a 4 4. This plays right into the jaws of Andrew's Mizium mortars, but James with a Core Clan Rampager left over in the hand. So yeah. we're really, I mean, we're, we're battling pound for pound here. There's a lot of haymakers. Well, Andrew knows, I mean, we know he had the Mizium mortars. James obviously did not, and that's going to be a devastating blow here. Mortars is such a powerful card in the aggro mirror match, because you're going pound for pound with them, and this is an, a card that essentially says, Wrath, your board. You know? Good on turn two, and good on turn 12. Yeah, 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 definitely. Rampager plus an extort trigger. I think he drew Falcon Wrath Aristocrat, too. Yep. So we'll see if Andrew has some sort of answer to this Rampager. He had another Mizzy Mortar. I think he's going to obviously just normal cast here, get in for six more, put him at three, and uh, luckily James is going to be able to play as Aristocrat and siphon the life off 
in order to survive the swing back here. Because without that, it would be game over. Yep, so Blind Obedience doing some, doing a, a reasonable amount of work here. He's right. gained some life and pinned down a lot of his creatures. He's definitely come down to Mizium Mortars, it looks like. Uh, clearly the card that's put this into Andrew's corner this game. And if Andrew draws anything, it will be game over, but it's a land, so we get to keep playing magic cards here. All right, a lot of draws here for James. All right, so we are 1 to 11. However, James can draw out of this with any decent creature. I think a Vera will be very nice, right, to get the Yeah, Vera will be incredible. Scavenging Ooze will be nice. Oh, and he drew a... Uh, Rampager and Extort Trigger. Not bad at all. Blind Obedience doing, still doing some work here. Yeah, let's go uh, see what he gets. This is good old fashioned, uh, I think that's a haste creature. Nope, it's a one drop. Okay. It's an Arbor Elf. All right, James is back to drawing. It's kind of exciting, right? Back and yeah. forth. Let's see who can top and deck James body. a ton of huge draws himself here. Yeah. He has his bonfires potentially in this deck. A lot of four. Powerful four mana creatures. You know what the best part is? You can safely tap out for Bonfire and attack them because your Blind Obedience ensures that you're not going to die to a hasty yeah. creature. He has a lot of... Oh, Ooh, wow. Keswick Wolfram wow. is also not shabby here. It's not too bad, but again, he can't attack because he's at such a low life total. How much damage is that? That would be eight. It's not enough. There's a Mortars off the top for Andrew. Oh, now we'll do it. We're going to be going... And there's... Yeah, that's yep. the match, yep. That's it. So it's fun to watch. Uh, obviously, at that point, it's who draws better off the top. I would rather be at 10 life than 2, obviously, which gives me I can draw a little bit worse than you as long as I draw, you know, something. Uh, Mortars there, a Rampage with a 1, a Domri with a 1 for Andrew. So even though James put on a good show, he's really in the doghouse being at such a low life. Yeah, well, his, his initial start there was just a little, a little cumbersome. Yeah. Didn't have lands coming to play untapped. And so the pace of the game from his side was such that Andrew was able to develop his board, get in some shots, and then overload of mortars when James was super exposed to it. Uh, if James had more lands that came into play on tap, he might have been able to force Andrew to trade to be able to block more often, set up the board in such a way that that mortars wasn't as devastating as it was. But because right. James got off to such a slow start there, the mortars was devastating. It's really 